welcome to episode 155 of Popcorn and Prosecco, a show that's all about talking about movies. I am Perry Nemiroff, and here are my co-hosts, Christy Puchko and Angie Hahn. Hey, everybody. Hi. So, as you might have noticed, the episodes have been a little inconsistent as of late, and we're going to talk about that soon. But right now, we're going to kick off this episode by talking about some of our most anticipated movies of summer 2017. So, who wants to kick it off with their pick? Uh, so mine's actually one I've seen already, so it's a little bit of a cheat. But guys, Atomic Blonde is so exciting! So Atomic Blonde is coming from the director David Leach, who co-directed John Wick. And this is the movie with Charlie Theron and James McAvoy and Sophia Botella. Uh, Charlie Theron plays a uh, agent, secret agent. It's, curled, it's it, during the Cold War. She's in Berlin before the wall has fallen. And it's a lot of 80s music. It's a lot of crazy cool fashion. And it's a lot of just holy fucking shit action. And I mean like fighting and sex. And it was just super exciting. And I got to see it at South by Southwest. And I described the environment in that theater as being like a concert. When when like fight scene hollered. And it was like we were all calling for an encore. Like I have not seen a lot of action movies like this. I am quoted on its poster and I'm fucking stoked. This is going to not just be one of the coolest action movies you will see this year. It's one of the best of the decade. I'm fucking stoked about it. All right, Angie, what's yours? Wow, I don't know how I'm going to top that, especially (laughs) if I haven't actually seen mine, although Chrissy has. Uh, So the movie that I'm picking that I am super, super looking forward to is Baby Driver. It's a new movie by Edgar Wright. And he's a director that, you know, I consistently like his movies. I like some of them more than others, but I always have a good time with his movies. They always are really... uh, you know, they're always just a good time. And one thing that he's always done really well is like rhythm. Like one of the things that makes his movies come alive and like make them feel so fun and lively and also really funny is just like how good he is at kind of like sticking to this like rhythm. Like, you know, that's just the way it's edited and stuff like that. So I think that Baby Driver is kind of perfect because it's it's been described to me as kind of like a musical almost, but with cars because it's all like soundtrack to music. And there's a lot of like, you know, it, it's at least from what I gather, there's, there's a lot of there's like kind of a rhythm rhythm and a musicality to the way that all things are cut together so then that part sounds really fun but it's also you know it's got like a fun cast like jamie fox and it looks kind of nuts isn't kevin spacey in it yes he uh, yeah fresh off of being a cat in nine lives he's in baby <laughs> driver that's actually how everyone should introduce it yeah fresh off of nine <laughs> lives kevin spacey in baby driver nine lives star kevin spacey is yeah. in this movie and i can't wait to see that um but yeah like it's just like everything everything that i've seen and heard about it just makes me really really curious and it's one of those movies that like even if it doesn't end up being one of my favorites of the year i just know like i have a feeling that it's gonna be if nothing else, something that's just unique and exciting to watch. So I'm, I'm very excited for that one. All right. I'm going to add one kind of obvious choice to this list. I'm going to say one of my most anticipated of the summer is Spider-Man Homecoming for a whole lot of reasons. It, there's a reason that we're getting another iteration of Spider-Man, even though it's, it's like the third one, I think, at this point. Because he's an awesome character. He's a lot of fun to watch, and I kind of feel that in all the trailers. I'm really excited for John Watts. I was a big fan of Cop Car and also of Clown, too. So, you know, with that trend of picking low, low low-budget independent filmmakers up and then plopping them down into an enormous franchise, I think he's someone who who is very promising and can do well in that kind of situation. So... Excited about him, excited about the cast, excited about the character. But I think more so than anything, I kind of just want to see this movie work really well because I want to see what happens when two major studios come together and wind up churning out a really great film. Because could you imagine how much that would change the industry if Marvel and Sony got along, churned out a fantastic movie, and studios started pairing up down the line? I mean, yes, there could be problems and it wouldn't all be, you know, like happy, wonderful things, but... We could wind up with movies that are just above and beyond anything we've ever seen before. More resources, more talent. It's just, it's a, a really exciting time for for movie making in general and also for Marvel. And I'm really curious to see how this whole thing pans out between Marvel and using Spider-Man and how long they're going to keep the character and what Sony has brewing with all the villains. So this is just a pretty pivotal point for for superhero movies, and in particular Spider-Man. So I, I've got my fingers crossed super tight for this one. I want it to be amazing. I did this episode for that one. I just want to make two points. One, I think your enthusiasm is justified. And two, technically this is actually three studios because Disney and Marvel are different studios. And I only mentioned that because it was something mm-hmm. they, they kept pointing out that they were like three studios coming together to make ah. one movie. 
So, like, it's it's even more incredible is all I'm saying. Like, I can totally agree with every other point. But it was, like, one of those things where it's like, yeah, you know, Disney slash Marvel. And they're like, no, like, those are distinct entities. This is three. Like, gotcha. So, yeah, that's that. That's awesome. All right. So so there you have it. Those are those are our most anticipated movies of summer 2017. There's a whole lot more to look forward to. But, but those are the three that have our eye right now. So here's to looking forward to those. So now to the next part of our episode, which is a little bittersweet. But again, as you might have noticed, the episodes haven't been particularly consistent lately. And that's because all three of us are very, very busy, and I would say it's a good thing because I've seen all three of us make some pretty incredible, exciting strides in the past year in particular, and that's meant that we haven't had all that much free time to record episodes of Popcorn and Prosecco, so we have decided that it is time to bring the show to a close. So episode 155 will sadly be our last, and we wanted to take the opportunity to kind of close it out officially and also look back at some incredible incredible moments that we've shared over the past what, what did we decide on three years 155 three years. episodes in three years our first podcast uh was posted on february 7th 2014 oh wow insane. it's yeah when we you put so a number on it then. like that it's it's kind of crazy <laughs> we were just young innocent waifs of bloggers back then now we're grizzled and jaded <laughs> well but that i mean that really kind of does mark the start of where we where we began with the podcast and why we're making the decision we are now. I mean, just the way that the industry has changed over the past couple of years, you know, it, it really, I, I used to tell uh, people all the time, I had a very hard time calling what we did a job for a while, even mm -hmm. though that's what I was doing to make a living because it was so much fun and it felt more like a hobby. And then all of a sudden, you know, all these little baby outlets that we worked for, they were picked up by big companies, they turned into really big properties that had some serious influence. And now, now, like we all have just incredible jobs and opportunities and things that I never thought we'd be able to do. Yeah, it's funny because I remember part of the reason we started the podcast was that the three of us liked our jobs, like what we were doing, but felt like we all wanted a place where we could be a little more vocal and not have to worry about appeasing an editor or whatever and really just say whatever we wanted. And I think that's also part of the reason the podcast uh, feels like we've outgrown it a little bit is that most of us are in a position now where we can say what we want, uh, where we're at. So, uh, it's, we've been very fortunate and very lucky. And part of me is sad that we're not doing, going to be doing this every week anymore. But then also it's just like, I don't know, man, I do feel like that it's, it's, it's the end of an era and like new things and exciting things are ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Yes, but what an era it's been. So we looked it up ahead of time, and our first ever episode was episode zero, actually, because it was a test, kind of a test run where we were all like, uh, guys, is this going to be crazy or is this going to be amazing? Spoiler alert, it was amazing. Um, and we <laughs> talked about the Frozen sing-along. We talked about, like, I think that was right after Philip Seymour Hoffman had, Hoffman had passed away. So we talked about our favorite movies of his. And we talked about the Lego movie. So there was that. Um, and then <laughs> I kind of feel like our podcast really started to take a specific shape for me when we all decided we were super into Winter's Day. <laughs> yeah, which was episode two, which is amazing. Like, that was a formative moment for us. Technically episode one, but yeah. Yes. That was a really formative episode for us where I was just like, oh, okay, so this is going to be the kind of podcast <laughs> where we, we can go on and just obsess about this like weird <laughs> misshapen movie that we all latched onto. And we loved it so much that not only did we do a live commentary of it once, we also actually took a field trip to the house where um, Jessica Brown Finlay from Downton Abbey was fucked to death by Colin Farrell. <laughs> and that will always remain one of my most treasured memories of anything that I've ever done in my career. <laughs> we made t-shirts. Like, we went hard on that. We were so excited. Yeah, I still have my Winter's Tale t-shirt. Yeah, that was uh, it was so much fun. Um, that was definitely a bigger deal to us than anybody else. It, including the tour guide. The tour guide to give no shits about Winter's Tale. He didn't know what we were talking about. <laughs> Which, like, imagine this, like, 7 year old tour guide who's probably doing this, like, to volunteer and just being like, and some more history about this house. And we're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, tell us more about Winter's Tale and Colin Farrell's deadly dick. And he's like, excuse me? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, God. And, yeah, we did a lot. We did two live commentary episodes. One was Winter's Tale and the other was Jupiter Ascending, Aww. which was amazing. And that was actually, this is something I don't think people know. That was the night that Perry told us that she was thinking about moving to L.A. Yeah. So we got really drunk. Watched <gasps> I do Jupiter's remember Ascending, that. And then had like real girl talk. 
It was a big night. That was like the the realest girl talk conversation I think I've ever had in my life. It, yeah. was, it was like I was telling you guys that, I don't know, like it was like a much bigger deal than than I'm moving to L.A. I think that's a, it was a huge deal. And like we were like in your apartment. So it was like we we're all gathered around. Like it was a very, yeah, it was a very Yaya sisterhood of the traveling pants. I've never watched either of those movies. So maybe that's not a good example. I was going to say, I was about to say, you do realize those are two completely different movies. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you just <laughs> combine them. Uh. <laughs> um yeah god yeah we've we've done a lot of reviews and we used to this podcast used to be video it used to be three reviews a week which got to be too much because i remember we started reviewing like really garbage movies just to fill it out it was like nobody cares about can this. i just say no one like one movie that i remember watching for this podcast and to this day i'm just like there's no way i would have ever watched this movie otherwise is like it was a weird like teen CWE version of The Great Gatsby. It, it was, was very, very bad. I remember huh? Affluenza. Yes, Affluenza! Yes! Because that's actually, I was about to say, I was like, that's why I watched Affluenza, which was garbage. I love... <laughs> I remember doing interviews for that, too. And oh, woof. <laughs> they, they weren't the best. They weren't the deepest conversations I've ever had. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I, don't have, I just have definite memories of watching that movie for this and just even at the time being like there's no reason i'm watching this except for because of how much i love christy and perry in our yeah. podcast yeah but even that even when we lot. started to narrow down the topics and stuck to our new format yeah. there's so many movies that i never ever in my life would have watched had it not been for you two and i'm pretty sure you know where i'm going with this one say it say it because i'm still so happy i made you watch it fucking wetlands <laughs> <laughs> I'll never, ever, ever in my life forget that movie. <laughs> Thanks to you guys. I thought you were going to say forgive Chrissy for making me watch that movie. I, still I will love never Wetlands so Christy. much. But Perry's deep, 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 deep disgust of Wetlands still amuses oh me so intensely. I I don't think I've ever cringed so much. I was I was like you know when like you're you're like cringing or like clenching the entire time and all of a sudden you relax and it feels like you've just ran like forty miles. I think I, think I took like a hardcore nap after that movie. <laughs> oh god! Uh, Perry can stand any bodily fluid as long as it's blood because she will watch yeah. something with just blood blood pouring by the buckets, but. Wetlands, she just, you Not are more so scared of that movie than most people are in most horror movies. Yeah. yeah like, gore yeah. and gross out are different things. Perry's fine with, with gore. With gore, gross yeah. Out. And it's a very gross movie, and I completely admit that. But yeah. It is so gross. It's so gross. It was also hmm. it was really fun because, like, whenever we got to watch movies together, if the other one wasn't there, then it was, like, fun to on the podcast find out what the other one thought. <laughs> And it was like, go ahead. You knew what Perry was going to think of that one. Don't act like, oh, yeah. oh I didn't no, know what true. Perry and was going to think. No, that's true. And it's like if it think. had a cute animal in it, we knew Perry would like it. Of course. Um, yeah. If an animal was hurt, we knew Perry was going to be against it. If there is a creature that seems like it's a villain, but actually it's just that humans are a bunch of dicks, Angie's super on board. That is very on brand. <laughs> Like, Angie's been texting me religiously since she's seen Alien Covenant and being like, this is the movie made for me. <laughs> Ridley Scott saw into my brain and made a movie for me. It's wonderful. <laughs> that was I saw it. And I was like, oh yeah, that was the Anna Jihan movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's very on brand. We all got to know each other's tastes super super well, mm -hmm. and we also got to know each other's sign off plugs super super well. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, to the point where there were episodes where one of you would mouth along while I did mine, which was like really just like trying not to pay attention. So I was like, I will, I will say my own name is what'll happen. I recited it literally right before we started recording today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It helps. It's like then I can remember it. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> How do I spell my name? We're good. I got it. I've memorized yeah. it, and we're fine. Um, the other yeah. thing, one other thing, I remember recently that happened with us was that for a period of like. A, I don't know how long it really was, but it felt like it was several months where the two of you had this, like, kind of cold war going. Because you tough. guys would just, one of you would love a movie and the other one would hate it. And it happened repeatedly over the space of a couple months. Yep. And then I, I, it kills me that I don't remember what was the movie that finally, like, ended this war that, like, we finally agreed on and we celebrated. I'm trying um, to remember. Because I yes. remember being so, it was so cathartic when I found out we both liked it. Because it was literally, like... 
it was mostly horror movies. And Perry and I both love horror movies, but we were not agreeing on anything. We didn't agree on Blair Witch. We didn't agree on Ouija Origins. Like, and I, every time it was like, oh, we didn't. I, she loved Don't Breathe, and I didn't. And we kept going back and forth where it was like, literally, it was as if we saw different movies where someone would be like, the cinematography was great. And the other one was like, no, it was terrible. <laughs> this was a hack fest. Like, it was just, there was no in between, there was no middle ground. That was wild. Oh, that was wild. I wish I could remember what it was. Yeah, I was trying to look back over. We were deciding maybe Train from Busan because we both really like that, which is a zombie. I think I really think it. that that might have been it. And even if that wasn't it, I would like I would like to just assume, like say and make it so it that, that it was it because that's such an amazing movie. <laughs> it was really good. It's also on Netflix. If you're listening to this and being like, "Ooh, Train to Busan," check that out. Good stuff. Or if you're Angie and you did not participate participate in that review because you didn't see it, and then you still haven't seen it because you're a bad person. Now I know. I'm it glad is on that Netflix you said it because I was going to say it's it's that you're a bad person and you haven't seen it. <laughs> I'm a bad person for lots of reasons, and that's one of them. Like one of the main ones, but you know, lots of reasons. And that's a movie that's actually really fun to watch at home, Angie, because I just watched a screener. I didn't see it in theaters, and I was still like horrified. That's really fun. <laughs> Highly recommend. And then another. Another episode, actually, that I remember we did that worked out really well for us is um, we interviewed the handmaid, the handmaiden and um, Moonlight in the same episode. And it was like one of the very few episodes we've ever done where we just both like all three of us were just over the moon about everything we were talking about that episode. And it was just it was so nice. Like, yeah. usually there's like, you know, even if there's one that we all end up loving, the other one is a little bit more mixed or we're all kind of like, eh it's fine like whatever but that was like it was like near the end of last year and it was in finally an episode where all three of us were just like these are fucking great yeah it's it also because handmaiden is not my type of movie so the fact that i was in there with you guys and i really yeah. liked it that kind of was a pleasant surprise to me also always remember brooklyn because perry saw it before angie oh and my I, god and we well, because you said you love it, and then I was like, oh, so it's not going to be a straightforward romantic drama because Perry is not into that. So then Angie and I kept being like, what is going to happen to this poor girl in Brooklyn? <laughs> like, And then we're like, oh, no, it's a super sweet movie. And like Perry in person is a very sweet person, but when she tends to recommend a movie, it is some fucked up shit. Like that is just – Probably. <laughs> yeah. That just tends to be I what happens. I love – I still think about Brooklyn all the time. I love that Great. movie. Great. It was beautiful. Aww. Going back even a little further, I remember right after we started the podcast, you guys were kind enough to do the podcast without me for a whole month when I went and I made Child Eater. And you guys were talking about all that. It's like I never, ever wound up seeing Transcendence. Ever. <laughs> good. Good. I'm so happy for you that you did Child Eater I remember we talked about Transcendence for Transcendence. like most of the car ride to visit the set of Child Eater. And you were like, should I see this? And we were like, no, hard no. No. Oh. And I never did. I, I listened to you. I listened to you. Oh, oh, so bad. It's so weird that since the, it's like a really weird way to track, you know, the whole evolution of the podcast because it was right at the beginning when I left and I shot Child Eater. And now just in, at the end of March, it came out on DVD and VOD. So it's just like every, everything Yay! kind of came full circle together. Uh, do you want to tell people where they can watch Child Eater? Oh my God! Yeah, go go watch Child Eater all over the place. Um, probably the easiest places to watch it are you could uh, you could buy or rent it on Amazon. It's also available through through Redbox and Google Play and a bunch of other streaming services. And we're working on more international options too. So it's spreading, and nothing makes me happier than to get tweets of you know screen caps of the movie saying people are watching it. It's it, the response has been something else. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. Fucking transcendence. I feel like that was my tipping point on Johnny Depp where, like, I was starting to waver on liking him. And then that I was like, I'm dead to me. I can't. Like, there's oh. just been nothing redeeming. And Pirates is coming up. And ugh. Oh, boy. Brace yourself. I think I'm going to see it next week. Same. Uh, oh, that's a sad <laughs> note to, to wrap up on. Um, <laughs> yeah, so well, let, let's maybe let's maybe wrap up the episode and kind of briefly give our plugs, but also talk about, you know, any any exciting new things that you're really happy about doing or that you're working on right now. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm still on Twitter. I'm at Christy Puchko, K-R-I-S-T-Y-P-U-C-H-K-O. I'm writing all over the web. Right now I'm writing a lot for Nerdist and uh, Comic Book Resources, and I'm a managing editor at Pajiba. I'm mixing it up. Hey, you hey. guys can't mouth along to this. Deal with that. 
Um, but you can get my career highlights at decadentcriminals.com. I'm also a regular co-host on It's Eric Nagel, which is a Sirius XM show that's available on the app and on Sirius. It plays every Saturday night. If you look up It's Eric Nagel, you can get all the details on that because there's a lot of different times it plays. But uh, yeah, tune into that. I talk about pop culture and just life stuff and movies and TV with the guys, and it's a good time. And uh, coming up, I've got a lot of stuff I can't really talk about, but uh, you know, I'll be at Comic-Con this year. That's in the plans. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think a lot of us will be there, if not all of us. Um, so maybe yeah, we'll... I'll be there. Good, I'm good, good. Be there. So we'll all be at Comic Con. Whether we'll run into each other is a whole other thing, because Comic Con is just madness. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's an exciting summer. There'll be some fun stuff ahead, I think. Yeah. Um. So you know, as you guys probably know if you've been listening, uh, it's been about two months now since I switched over to Mashable.com as the movies reporter. So I've been doing a lot of really fun work over there. Uh you know, more reviews and more features, but also like one time I wrote about 10 Disney animals we would totally date. So it's the kind of thing that does all sorts of weird, wacky shit. Um, And I've been having a really... (laughs) So I've been having a really good time there. You can find all my work there. Um, You can also... Talk to me on Twitter at A-J-H-A-N. And, you know, as you know, before I was at Mashable, I was at Slash Film. And even though I'm not there anymore, I just want to give them a shout out because they were really good to me for six years. And also, they are fucking killing it. Like, I'm jealous of the people that get to work there now because the new managing editor, Jacob Hall, is doing such a kick-ass job. They have a lot of great content. So check out my work on Mashable. Check out their work on Slash Film. Every- everything's-, everything's great for everyone. Yeah. Um... So obviously I moved from New York to LA a year ago to start working with Collider Video instead of Collider.com and all all is well. I still get to work with the dot-com folks a little bit who are all amazing, but it's pretty much been all video. So you could you could mostly find me on the Collider Video YouTube channel and as of the recording of this episode, you'll likely be able to go on my own YouTube channel and see some stuff. I'm going to try to get it going again and been working on some cool stuff. I'm, uh, I love how I'm afraid to say it out loud because I'm supposed to shoot stuff later this afternoon and just in case anything goes wrong, but that is the plan. So by the end of the day of this recording, there should be videos up there. So keep an eye out for that as well. And I don't know. I, th- I think that's it. Does anybody want to say anything else before we close it out? I want to thank everybody that's tuned in. I mean, thanks for putting up with us when we were a video. Thanks for sticking with us when we weren't. Uh, I know things in the past two months have been rocky as to when we posted, but it's been really nice because we, anytime you look at our Facebook page, anytime you tweet at us, like we get to hear about that. And it's been really lovely to, to just, you know, know you guys are listening. So sorry, we won't all be in one collective place, but we're still out doing all these different things on the plus side. The reason we are is just because we're doing way more than we were three years ago. I don't think anything else needs to be said. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you everyone for being with us on this very strange journey. Yeah, th- I will reiterate all of that. Thank you guys so much. I mean, the the reason that we went three, part of the reason we went for three years is for your support. And also with a thank you to Christy and Angie, because this has been, this Aww. has been something else. And I, I will say on a, on a personal note, having popcorn and Prosecco over the past year is definitely part of the reason that I think I was able to make this transition that I felt like I had like a, that rock from home. So thank you guys for being there for all the support. Thank Thank you everybody for listening and for supporting us. It's been, it's been incredible and we can't wait to, to keep, keep in touch with you guys through the other incredible things we're going to do right now, well into the future. You guys are all great. Thank you so much.